Hey guys and welcome to today's video where we actually have some new members of our isopod family. We have clown isopods. Now before I get into their care and everything, I just wanted to thank Swell Reptiles for sending me the isopods, a range of leaves and actually this tub. Um, I will leave links below, they are affiliate links, but if you want anything you see today, check them out below. It looks like I have like little shadowy ghost hands before you see my actual hands. Anyway, so the isopods, now they actually came a day before the leaves arrived and they came in this little tub. This was actually very well packaged, it was a box within a box, lots of packaging in there so they couldn't be moved around, but unfortunately one did pass away. Now you're meant to get ten, uh, unfortunately I got nine, um, but I will say if you were buying these in order to use them as cleanup crew, because you get so little, I would say to put them in a separate tank first. Um, most of the time when I see clown isopods for sale you do only get a small number so something like this would work because I think if you put your 10 in your gecko's tank and your gecko's curious and takes a nibble that won't work out well but if you give them time in their tub they can breed you can get a decent number if one or two unfortunately get bitten um, it's not the worst situation i have heard that with some isopods especially leopard geckos they may try to bite them and then they spit them back out because they don't taste nice but um just so you don't really you know waste your money and sacrifice isopods it might be best to keep them in a setup like this until you have a larger quantity for now though i would probably keep these guys as pets until i see a significant number of them and i think oh actually they should go in the tank and i found out something quite interesting is that this species they don't have to be in super humid conditions all the time and it's actually better if they aren't always humid a lot of people what they do is 25 percent of the tank will be super wet, damp, moss, all sorts, and 75% of the tank will be dry. And that's actually pretty good for us leopard like gecko owners who wanna go bioactive and don't know what cleanup crew to use. Now, in Diego's tank, I have tropical gray wood lice, I have giant orange wood lice. So they're actually working out quite well, but this species may do even better because Diego has a humid hide. It has leaves in, moss in, it's um, watered every time I water the other plants. And so it's a humid hide for him, but it also helps house a lot of the isopods. So this species might do well. And to top it off, the colour of them may put the gecko off trying to eat them. Now, before I talk you through the whole setup, I did mention we got a range of leaves from Swell. So we received cashew leaves, cashew, cashew, um, Indian almond leaves, which are particularly good for aquariums, jackfruit leaves and mango leaves. Now on the website they say a 10 pack and maybe I'm wrong, but I swear my packaging said 12 pack. But anyway, you get a nice range of leaves and we have some here. I did actually go around and crunch them up and put them in here, in the gecko's tanks and even with my beetles. Oh. I think someone should do ASMR with just crunchy leaves, it's the best. But anyway, these leaves are quite tough. And what I originally was going to do for this video is put in leaves, see what the cleanup crew like better, see how long it took to break them down. But then I realised that's incredibly boring and ideally we don't want the leaves to break down too quickly because we want them to have a habitat to hide behind and also to eat. So, so far these are doing well. I'd say the almond leaf is probably the thinnest out of all of them, so I'm not sure how long that will last. But as I said, I'm going to put this in our aquarium. Look at fish. Now, back to this setup. So in this tub, before I added in the clown isopods, I had tropical grey ones, springtails, and the odd giant orange one. Um, from what I've experienced in the gecko tanks, it, the, the wood lice seem to get on pretty well together. Um, it might be a case that I need to move some out uh, the conditions aren't perfect for all of them, but we shall see. Um, overall, like here's a giant one, and I'm pretty sure we only have one giant orange wood last because when we were moving, I found this crawling along in the living room, and I think it popped out of a tank whilst we were moving them. And so I was, I, I mean, I'm pretty much 99.9% .9 sure that's one of mine. That's not a native wood last to England, but I didn't want to put it in my gecko's tank in case it's walked through something i don't know so i put it in here but maybe after a while of it being in here i'll put it with its own kind but it's interesting because if you compare the three different species and obviously i've only had clown isopods for like 
maybe a week. Um, the giant orange ones, I see the most. The tropical grey ones are pretty elusive and as soon as you put on the light or open the door they go away. And I thought having just ten, actually nine, nine cloud isopods, that I wouldn't see them. But actually, especially at night, I have been able to see them. Um, and I have seen some videos, they like to hang out under here. Oh my god! Okay, I don't know how well you're going to see this, but there's one here. There's lots of tropical grey ones, they're all moving now. But this cork's really good actually, because um, all the- oh there's one there! All these little holes they like to hide in, so definitely recommend a nice bit of cork. Um, oh, by the way, if you didn't know, this substrate we have eco-earth, earth mix, moss, bark chips, bits of cork. Um, for food, I give them Custodian Fuel by Arcadia, fresh leaves, dried leaves, obviously the wood itself. If there's leftover Pangea uh, from the geckos, they'll eat that. If you find that crickets have died, um, your feeder crickets, so you haven't been able to even feed them to your gecko before they died, pop them in here, they would like to eat them. So they really will just clean up everything for you. You can put all sorts in here. But yeah, as I was saying originally, like considering we only have nine individuals, you do actually see them quite easily. So if you were choosing, say, out of these guys and the tropical grey ones and you wanted a pet that you could see often, so far it's these guys. I, maybe because they're settling in, I don't know, but the tropical grey ones are still very helpful and I can see them about, they just blend in so well. Um, but these are really awesome to look at, they've got all their spots, they've got the red down the side, um, and definitely a unique species. What I'll do though is keep them in here, keep them fed, keep them watered, do all that good stuff, see if they breed, if they do start to breed and I start to see more, if I decide to add them in leopard gecko tanks, of course I'll do an update on that. Um, if you are into isopods like I am, I don't know what it is, I just find them so cute, but there is a channel called Supreme Gecko and I've followed him for years and he is doing some really great helpful isopod content, so I'll leave his link to his channel below because if you're like me and you just find them weirdly interesting then you might also like his channel but um yeah i hope you've enjoyed this little short video and got to know our little clown isopods if you have name suggestions for all nine let me know below but uh thank you for watching guys and goodbye